Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today we are going to be making a buffalo and this is inspired by buffalo from Custer State Park which is in South Dakota. This is going to be a simplified lesson for young students. Let's look at some of the buffalo here that I found at Custer State Park and it was really exciting. We went on the um, nature loop and as we drove to a little uh, conservation center, there was lots of buffalo on both sides of the road. And we were able to get out of the car and go up to the buffalo pretty close because near the facilities they had uh, a fence around them. So we were able to really see them up close and they're amazing. The male and female buffaloes, if you look closely, they both have horns if they're adults. The younger ones, and we happened to go in the spring, so there was lots of young buffalo there. They haven't quite started growing their horns yet. And the younger ones, if you look, they're a little bit lighter than the, um, the larger buffalo. And their colors are varying in brown values from light to dark brown. So we're gonna be using lots of different values of color today in the brown families. And we can make these using light colors, which would be the tints, and the dark colors, which would be the shades. So we're working up with brown colors today. The buffalo, originally, there were 35 to 75 million buffalo all over the United States originally. Most of the buffalo during that time of, um, it's called westward expansion, where the first settlers went from the east to the west coast, that's the time that a lot of the buffalo were actually hunted. And unfortunately, they were hunted down to only 300 or so buffalo left right at the um, turn of the century. And... Uh, so that was a very sad time in history. In 1894 is when they made it illegal to hunt buffalo in Yellowstone. And when I went this summer to Yellowstone, we actually saw a few buffalo there as well. Today, there are 4,000 buffalo living in Yellowstone. And in the eight, late 1800s, there were only 24, 25 and so conservation, meaning we're trying to save the buffalo, uh, conservation efforts um, helped increase it to 4,000 buffalo today. So that's exciting. So buffalo lived to be about 20 years old. And you can see here, a lot of them are eating grass and uh, they can run pretty fast. So when you ever see a buffalo, if you happen to go in the Midwest or you're from the Midwest, out in this area, and if you happen to approach a buffalo, they can run to 30 miles an hour, so you're not gonna outrun that buffalo. It's always good to stay uh, uh, you know, pretty far back from a buffalo, or I think they say a couple of um, football fields, and, uh, or like we're seeing viewing here through fences where you can't uh, you know, be in danger of the buffalo. So now we're gonna go ahead and start our picture. The first thing we wanna do is we're gonna be folding our paper. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second, but I'm gonna review first with you what it's gonna look like. We'll hold our paper vertically, and these dotted lines mean it's where we're gonna fold. I'm gonna bring one side over, fold it together to make it a really skinny, long piece of paper. Then on these dotted lines, I'm gonna bring up the bottom to the top, and I'm gonna fold that again, and it's gonna make it a rectangular or smaller piece of paper. Then we will open it all up. It then forms four spaces. Each space will be one fourth of the page. So let's do that. I have my piece of paper. We take the long side, bring it to the other side. Right down the edges match and press with your hand. Take the bottom of this long piece of paper, bring it up to the top and press. 
and then we open it all up and now we're ready to start our paper. You can see that's the center of our page. For this lesson, it's going to be a draw along. So you will draw along with me. So I will do something and then you do it right after I finish it. So I'm gonna put my finger here in the middle. So now you do it. Now we're gonna bring our other finger over a little bit. See how it's almost a finger space in between. And right on that fold, it's kind of hard to see, right on that fold, I'm gonna put a dot where my finger was, or a little line, let's put a little line, right on the fold. Now I'm gonna bring this finger back to the center, and I'm gonna jump over the same amount of space. Jump over, and right on the fold, put another little line. So I have a space, I can put at least three fingers here between the two. And I'm right on the fold line. So the first thing we wanna do, let's go to this line. See how I put my finger down? I'm just gonna trace around the top of my finger. That's like so. I'm not gonna go very far down my finger. And then I'm gonna go to the other side. Put my finger right underneath that line. Just curve around your finger now. Just like that. So I have two kind of like bumps. They can look like mountains or an N shape, I call that. Okay, now we're gonna turn that just into a circle. It's okay if your circle's not perfect. Now watch how I turn it into a circle. I come carefully to this side, I go down and up. So it's a circle the size of my finger. Down and up. These are gonna form the buffalo eyes. Now we're gonna go to the first circle here Let's go down to the bottom edge here. I'm gonna make a straight diagonal line through the circle. Watch me first. I'm starting at the bottom edge, go straight up, and I'm heading toward the edge of the page. That's a diagonal line. It's a line that is not straight, it's sideways. Diagonal. We're gonna do the same on the other side but I'm coming to the inside of this eye here, on this side, closest to the center. I'm gonna start at the bottom of the circle, diagonally through the circle. Yep. For the next step, we're, we're gonna go here, and I'm gonna tip my paper a little bit sideways so you can see it a little bit better. And I'm gonna blow it up. So I'm looking at the, the diagonal line I drew, and I'm gonna put in the center of that line, I'm going down and up, drawing a letter U inside the circle. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side, starting in the center here, down and up. That's gonna be his dark pupil inside the eyes. The buffalo's face area is pretty dark. And when we color this in or paint it in, we're gonna make it a little bit lighter. But we're gonna color in the dark pupils because he does have some really large dark eyes. So there is our eyes. Let me bring it back out so you can see it. Now we're gonna go to the very bottom of the page and we're gonna start our next step. So what I do is I take my fingers and we want to measure and we're going to measure with our fingers. So I'm going to take my fingers and bring three of them together like so. And I'm going to hold my fingers horizontally. This is holding them vertically. I'm going to turn my hand so they're the, matching the edge of my paper and just place them at the very bottom of your page. 
three fingers up. Do you see how my fingers line up with the bottom of the page? And I'm in the center where the fold is. Measure, and on the fold, put a little mark. A little straight horizontal line. That's where your fingers are measuring. Now we're gonna make this line a little bit longer on the one side, a little bit longer on the other. It's the space between the eyes. Now we're gonna do a curve. So we're gonna curve up and around. On this side, up and around. This is like the letter C, and this is the backwards letter C. Next step, connect it together. Whoop. This is forming what's called his snout area. The snout is this really big, large nose. And in the wintertime, this snout is really important for the buffalo. And I'll tell you about that in a second. Let's get the next part. Number one, number one. The snout is what helps keep the buffalo alive in the winter time. He has a big snout and a really big furry head. And that helps push the snow like a bulldozer or a snow plow. And it plows all the snow out of the way so he can get the grass underneath the snow. Because the buffalo connect together, eat mostly grass in their diet. And so if he didn't have that big snout and big head area, he couldn't move the snow and then he wouldn't be able to eat in the winter time. So that's why it's a really big nose and snout. Now we're gonna come dot in the mid, dot on one side, dot on the other. And let me bring this in so you can see a little bit better. And it's a slight curve down and a curve down the other way. And I'm gonna get, we're gonna get some detail in this snout area. Now we're gonna have, it's gonna be almost like a letter U, so I'm gonna go down and up. See how it's kind of resting right on this curve? Down and up. And now we're gonna connect it all together. Whoop, whoop. Those are actually where he breathes through, those little holes. The next step is to come on up. We've done our snout area. Now we're gonna come on up and we're gonna go above the eyes, right on the fold line. Not very far up though. Just put a little mark here. We're jumping up. We're gonna go across, and I'm gonna slightly wave it because the buffalo had this really big, thick, woolly kind of hat sitting on top of his head. It's his hair, woolly, thick hair. So we're gonna kind of give it a wavy line. And I'm gonna come over straight, but I'm doing it wavy until I reach the eye. See where the eye is? So I'm gonna do a wavy line up and down, or right above the eye. Same on the other side, a little up and down and stop. So he has this, here's this wavy little hairdo. It's kind of like a little hair bun on top of his head. And the, the buffalo, and they're also called bison, they're related to sheep and they're actually related to cows. So a little bit of both. That's why they have the wool here. And they need that wool to keep them warm in the winter. Now we're gonna jump up again, put a little line, and notice I still have room at the top. And now I'm gonna come around and give him that big woolly bun. Wiggly wavy over, wiggly wavy over. And now I'm coming around, it's circular. So wavy wavy, be really careful as you do this because you're making a wavy letter C. 
And on the other side, we're doing the same. Just take your time, go slow. If you kind of just speed the, the, the shape on real fast, go zoop, it might not come out well. So wavy, wavy, wavy. And our buffalo's getting a nice little warm cap, a warm hat on top of his head. So I take the top of the eye, I jump over a little bit and put a dot. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. I jump over, notice I don't draw on my paper, put a dot. That's gonna be a guideline. It's actually right on my fold, right here. So I'm jumping over. Now we're forming the top of his head. So we're gonna take this line, bring it up to the woolly cap, bring it on up. This is where we're gonna put his ear. And when I was looking at those buffalo, they didn't have really huge ears. So let's just make a over and back, just a little ear bump. Come up and down. Compared to his body, his ears were quite small. Remember, those males can be one ton, which is a lot of weight. And do the same on the inside. And the females are a little bit smaller. They're not as big as the males. So if you ever encounter a gigantic buffalo, he's sure to be the boy. Okay, so now we're going to do the horns. So let's bring it down so you can see it. I'm going to jump up. And we're gonna be nearing the top of our page. I'm gonna just jump down a little bit and on the fold, here's my center line, which is the fold. So from the center line, I'm jumping down, put my finger here. I'm gonna put a dot on one side of my finger and a dot on the other side of my finger. Make it really small now. We don't wanna to get too carried away. And this is gonna form the inside of his horns. We're gonna form this C shape first and a backwards letter C. So I'm gonna come over. Now I'm ending up right here. So I'm gonna end up on the edges here of my little woolly cap. So I'm doing a giant letter C, connect it to the woolly cap. On this side, same thing jump backwards. Now look, I come over to the right, curve to the dot. Nice big pointy horns. These horns are thick. They're not really super long, but they're thick, pointed, and powerful. Now watch this. We're going to make the other side of the horn, but look where we're going to have it come connect. We start here, down around at the bottom between the ear and the, the woolly cap on both sides. So watch how I do it first. I'm gonna have it pointy, pointy, pointy. And then I'm getting wider because I'm gonna drive my marker right between the ear and the woolly cap. Go slow and be careful. There, I wanna connect it all together nice. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Go slow, sometimes the second side's harder. Remember, we make it really thin at the top, right here, then we come down and around. While you're making these horns, I'm gonna show you a video where the two buffalo are, are kind of locking horns. Their two heads are together, and they're uh, they're kind of fighting in a fighting stance. And listen really carefully, because you'll be able to listen to the um, you'll be listening to the grunts that the two males are making as they. and they're trying to lock horns and push each other with these powerful horns. They could, well, they could be just fighting over who's the dominant one, who's the boss, who's the leader of the group. I think the 
Now we're going to continue and we're going to do the side of his face. This is his snout area. This is his little chin mouth area. His mouth is right in here. So we're going to bring this line down to the bottom of the snout. Don't come on out real round. He has, it tapers down a little bit. So watch me first. Go slow and careful. Down. I'm headed toward the bottom right here. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So know where you're going to go right here at the bottom. Start here. Visualize your line curving around slightly right to the bottom. And if you do it slow and careful, you won't come way out and you, you'll be happy with your line. Now, sometimes the males, and it's kind of fun to put on, under their chin have really long hair. If you want to put that on, you can. I'm just going to come down a little bit, down a little bit, and I'm going to put it oh, a little wavy and jagged. It's kind of scruffy and scraggly. Now we're gonna connect, and this is gonna form kind of his furrier, large scale head, because this is his facial area, but then around it, he's got this really large, powerful neck area. So we're gonna come from the ear, and we're gonna come out and around, and you can do this slightly wobbly line. See how I'm making it slightly wobbly? Because it's his powerful, woolly, neck and I it's circular so I'm coming off the ear toward the edge of the page right to the bottom so it's kind of a roundish shape and there is our buffalo and it's also called a bison or a buffalo but I like the word buffalo better that's why that's why I use you do too my first graders like buffalo too. It just sounds better. So now we're gonna be using values to color them in. And for coloring in, you can use markers, you can use crayons, you can use paint. My kids are gonna be using paint, um, but we're using tints of colors so it makes it lighter. Our lighter values of color are made with white and tints, or I like to add other colors instead of just white to tint my colors. And then the darker colors are, are darker values made with browns. Take brown and add black to it, or brown and add darker blues to it, and you get darker browns. So we're gonna be exploring different values of brown today, and we're gonna be coloring in and painting in our buffalo. And I'm gonna show you my first grade examples at the end. And I do have this follow along sheet that helps students. If you click on the title, it'll take you to um, my Patreon account where you can access this sheet. It'll also take you to a teacher paid teacher if you wanna access this. And it just breaks down the step, step by step for the kids who need a little extra help. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. If you like the video, then hit the like button. And if you love the video, hit the subscribe button. And I want to thank my patrons for supporting this channel. And if you would like to become a patron and support the channel, go ahead and click the title and it'll take you to a link to the Patreon account. Also, don't forget to check out my teacher pay teacher. It's called the Art Ladies Store on Teacher Pay Teacher. Many worksheets are on there that you can use with my videos.